Nigeria. Absolutely. Now, now, would you say mm -hmm. that the states are doing well? No. Why, why are you not talking about the states? No, because your focus is on. It's, you see, if I thought the states are doing well, I won't even go for president. Okay. I would go and pick a state that is doing well. Yes, and uh, start to manage the states. But Nigeria is such is in such a bad state right now that only a president can fix Nigeria immediately. Uh, if I go to a state and one state is fixed, you still have 35 states to go and federal capital territory. If I go to a state and it's fixed, you still have the African continent that is badly in need of a leader in Nigeria that is upright, that is that has capacity, has character, and is able to take Nigeria to the next level, and by extension, the continent of Africa, and uplift the dignity of the black race. So there's so much that has been expected from a president of Nigeria that we can't afford to allow people who don't know what they are doing to continue to be our president while we aspire to be cancelled. Well, I will, looking at you, it will actually be very nice to see you as a president. Exactly. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, that, that's not an endorsement. It is an endorsement. <laughs> well, what, oh, I, I, this is the last question we're going to ask you because uh, the time You're is... Out of time. Yes. Yeah, um, can you just tell us, if you become the president of Nigeria today, and everything is possible, we all know that. Mm -hmm. What kind of changes do we expect? Let's change the if to when. When I become Nigeria's president, uh, you see changes will connect with Nigeria in 10 different areas immediately. And we will see immediate improvement in security because we will overhaul the security agencies in this country such that the characters that are supporting headsmen that are promoting Boko Haram will be taken out. They will be eased out of the system. Uh, we will remove policemen who are guarding rich people and put them to guard ordinary people and protect them. We will provide electricity by injecting renewables, solar energy, to the uh, level of 4,500 megawatts. You know, we will turn this country into a construction site by providing infrastructure so that the road between here and Uyo will not take 20 years to complete. It will take maybe three months maximum to make it happen. We will fight corruption like nobody has ever fought corruption before. That's what I do for a living, is fighting people without even the police. I will become the commander in chief of the armed forces. I don't need to tell you what will happen next. A lot of people will just stop stealing or the ship out of Nigeria. The economy of Nigeria will work for the people of Nigeria. I can't break it down because there's no time. We'll restructure this country, but it will be a restructuring for the future for young people, not old people telling us how they want to restructure us. When I small fact, the only thing we owe them is befitting barrier, not restructuring. We would put health as a priority, education as a priority, agriculture. We want to grow, you know, the yam that we come and do a new yam festival here. It will be a real yam, not yam that was brought from Congo or Togo to come and do New Year Festival. We'll grow rice locally, not import rice and package it and call it Anambra rice or Anambra vegetable, whatever they do with the scam <laughs> that they do. And there will be terrorism, I mean, where tourism and technology will be the fulcrum of all of this. Okay, I can know. actually see you have it all figured out. It is now, that, that's a question I missed here. You yeah. know, Nigeria, kind of, the political system is functioning on equity. Everywhere you go, they say equity, uh, these people feel marginalized, these people will have to rule this. But do you think that's zoning. that the zoning, that's mm. thank you. Mm. Do you think that zoning is no, on no, your no, side? No, zoning, nobody, as they say, zoning is a lazy man argument for capturing power. You know, even if it's zoning, we have now created another zone. Our new geopolitical zone is known as Zone Seven. Oh. It's our turn. That's it. That's the zone of the disenfranchised, the unemployed, the abused, the decimated, the discredited, and the abandoned. Mm -hmm. So it's our turn. So if it is zoning, we know how to confront them with Zone Seven. <laughs> All right, uh, it's been a wonderful one, and it's been a, uh, an interesting interaction with uh, the media personality and presidential hopeful, Mr. Omoyele Showere, uh, the 47-year-old man who is aspiring to become the president of Nigeria come 2019. And the man the, in charge of Zone 7. Zone 7. Zone 7. <laughs> and he's also the founder of online, the online news medium, Sahara Reporters. Thank you very much for your time here. Thank you for bringing me.